and welcome back to art class. Today for our project we are celebrating an artist's birthday. Today the artist that we're learning about his name is Wayne Tebow and he is going to be turning 100 years old this year on November 15th. Now there's actually a pretty good chance that that's today, the day that you're watching this video. And how awesome is that, that we have an artist who is so famous, I'm gonna show you some examples of his artwork, and he's turning 100, that is a huge birthday. So to help celebrate Wayne Tebow's 100th birthday, we are going to be making some gumball machines, just like some that Wayne Tebow painted. Now some of the things that Wayne Tebow is famous for painting include lots of sweet things like desserts. I'm going to hold my art magazine, my Scholastic magazine up here so you guys can see. And he is famous for drawing different kinds of cakes and desserts. All right, for like literally slices of cakes and pies and all sorts of delicious things that, oh, I don't know about you guys, but it makes Miss Weichmann so hungry. All right. And one of the things that he was also famous for painting um, were, here's another shot of those delicious looking cakes, cakes and sweets, um, these gumball machines. Now I have a tiny one right here. I'm going to hold it up to the camera so you guys can see. So he did a series of also drawings and paintings of gumball machines. So we are going to make our own gumball machines, just like ones that Wayne Tebow would do. Things that you're going to need for this lesson, you're going to need a piece of paper to draw on, a pencil and eraser. I would try and find something round, if you can, to trace for the top of your gumball machine. Um, I found a container that I had laying around the art room that the lid happened to be the perfect size. You don't want it to be too tiny because you want it to take up a decent amount of your paper, probably like the top half. So you want to find something that's going to be about that big. Um, if you have any um, lids to anything at home, I'm thinking maybe like a tub of Crisco, something like that, would probably have a lid that would be around the same size that would be perfect for the top of your gumball machine. If not, just draw the best circle that you can. But I'm gonna lead you through the steps, step by step, to draw the gumball machine. And then we'll talk about some different options that you have when it comes to coloring your gumball machines. So, let's get started. All right, we are ready to start drawing our gumball machine step by step. So, feel free to follow along with me. And remember, it's a video, so if you need to pause it or rewind and watch something that I do again, go ahead and do that. But let's go ahead and start making our gumball machine. So you are going to take whatever object that you have found at home to help you trace a circle, or if you're feeling brave, you can draw your own circle. What I would probably do is if you don't have something to trace, you can take your opposite hand, just like we've done before, make a fist, and you can hold your fist near the top of your paper and use that as a guide to draw a circle around your fist. And that way it won't be too small, but it also won't be too big either. So that's an idea in case you don't have something to trace. But if you do, you're gonna take your object to trace your circle. You're gonna hold it near the top, not all the way at the top. You wanna leave a little bit of space at the tippy top of your paper. Try and center it. And then you are going to trace. Now remember, when you're tracing, it's different for me because I'm holding it up and down. Usually you'll be holding it down on a desk or a table. So you want to make sure that whatever hand you're not holding your pencil with, you're holding your tracer still, and you're not putting your pencil in sideways underneath your tracer, you're holding it straight up and down. That is very important. So I'm going to center, and I'm going to hold my pencil straight up and down as I trace my circle. And then you pick it up. So I hope you guys can see that I will move a little bit closer for you there you go so we have the top circular glass dome of our gumball machine and now we're gonna start adding some other things including the bottom um, if I take my example here all right now we're going to start drawing in the bottom of our gumball machine so from the bottom of my dome I'm going to draw two lines that come down, not all the way to the bottom. 
that are kind of sort of curved like that. So it almost starts to look like we're drawing a person, right? And then we're going to draw a really long and skinny oval to make the base of our gumball machine. So I'm going to go across and like that. So there's the base of our gumball machine. So we have the glass dome where the gumballs live, the base where all of our quarters go, and the very, very bottom. So the bottom and the base, my bad. All right, now we're going to draw the little part where you put the quarter in. And then this is our little window where we get the awesome part, right? The gumballs, that is the best part of all of this. So we're actually gonna draw that little dome at the bottom first. So right here in the middle, draw a rainbow line, goes up and over. It doesn't have to be perfect. If it's a little crooked, that's okay. Mine's a little crooked. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm not gonna erase it. It's my gumball machine. It can look however I want it to. Your gumball machine can look however you want it to. And I'm gonna add that little window where to get the good stuff where I know where to get my gumballs from. I love gumballs. I used to always get one every time I went to the diner. I would always make sure I had a quarter on me so I could grab a gumball on the way out. And now we're going to make the quarter slot. So right above your little gumball receiving window, I'm going to draw a horizontal line with two little vertical lines. You're going to make them come in just a little bit. So it almost looks like we're drawing a rectangle, but not quite. We're going to bring those lines down just a smidge and over. And there's our quarter slot. All right. And one more thing that I'm going to do is I want to make sure that I make a background for my gumball machine. Now, this is a very important part of any sort of artwork that you make is that you don't just want to have a random gumball machine floating in the middle of a piece of paper. You want it to look, you know, like an actual picture of a gumball machine. You wouldn't just have a gumball machine floating in space. So you want to create some sort of background. So I'm going to draw a horizon line to help anchor my gumball machine so it doesn't look like it's floating. So it looks like it's on some sort of surface. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line that goes across, stop when I hit my gumball machine, and continue that line on the other side. So now it looks like it's sitting on a table, and then I have the space behind it. That could be like my background. You can see in both of these projects, I kind of did the same thing. I just created a striped background because I don't really think you would want to do a polka dotted background because you already have the gumballs as dots. That might be too many circles going on. So I decided to do some stripes, but you could really do whatever you want. Maybe I might make my background with some wavy lines. Think about some of those lines that we learned about in our line lesson, and you can use those. Maybe instead of wavy lines, maybe you might want to do zigzag lines in the background, sharp and pointy. But I'm going to do some fun and silly wiggly lines in my background that I am later going to color in. Now I'm going to add a couple things to this picture. I'm also going to outline my picture with a black marker, something that I did not do in either one of my examples here, but I want to show you how adding that black outline can kind of help your picture pop a little bit more. And we'll talk about different ways that you can make your gumballs. All right, so you can see that I took a black marker and I outlined or traced over all my pencil lines with the marker. So it kind of makes my gumball machine look like a coloring page. If you ever have a coloring book or coloring pages, everything is outlined with a thick black line before you color it. So this kind of makes it easier instead of trying to color over your pencil lines. This is always a good idea for art projects to make them look a little bit more neat. Um, I am also going to be coloring this. I'm going to be using marker, so I'm going to be talking to you about the right way to use a marker in just a second. But I do want to point out that you can use anything at home that you have to color with. You could use crayon, you can use colored pencil, you can use markers, again, which I'm going to explain kind of the right way to use markers. I have my whole box of markers down here next to me. I just motioned them, but I realize you can't see them. Or you can paint if you have paper that's thick enough, or if you happen to have any of 
these cute little guys at home. These are those little pom-poms, little colorful pom-poms. These are super fun to glue on. This is something we may have done if we were in school together. But you can take a couple colorful pom-poms and glue those onto your gumball machine to make kind of like a cool 3D pop-out gumball and something cool that you can touch. So those are some different options for things that you can do. But I do want to talk to you about marker. Markers are an amazing art supply. They can help make things look really bright, really colorful, definitely a lot brighter than crayon because it has the pigment or the ink inside of it. But something that I want you to notice about a marker that you've probably never really paid attention to before is the shape. Now if I hold my marker up close, you can see it's got a shape of a cone on the top of it. If I use the skinny point, I can make a super skinny line, but if I lay the marker on its side and use that thick side there and drag it across, I can make a really thick line. So depending on how you hold your marker, you can use it to help you color in big spaces and little spaces. Of course, if you're ever coloring in a really, really big space, I wouldn't recommend using a marker, but um, a space like this isn't bad. I'm talking about like on really big paper, I probably wouldn't use marker to color. But I do want to show you how I can use this red marker to help color in some of my space. I'm not going to use the pointy tip because then this is going to take forever to color in my machine. I want to color in my machine red. Most gumball machines are red, but you can make it whatever color you want. But I'm not going to use the little point because that's going to literally take forever. I'm going to hold my marker on the side and I'm going to use it and I'm going to drag it back and forth and that way I get a nice solid color. Now another thing I like to do with marker, all right, when it overlaps it does get a little bit darker but that's okay. But I like to take my markers when I'm coloring. I like to hold them sideways. I like to flip the way I'm holding it and I actually like to outline the entire shape that I'm going to be coloring. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to fill it in. If you have markers that happen to get a little bit dried out, I'm going to give you a tip. Just because your marker seems to be dried out doesn't mean you should throw it away. A trick that I would try is actually get a tiny little cup of water or a glass with a little bit of water in it. You take your kind of sort of dried out marker, dip it in the water, get it wet, and it'll start working again because the water will help kind of resaturate the tip of the marker and get the rest of the ink flowing. So I am going to use my markers to color in the rest of my gumball machine and I will show you when I'm done. finished gumball machine. Now again, no matter what you're using to color with, whether it be crayons, paint, markers, you want to make sure that your picture is complete and finished by coloring both your gumball machine and your colorful background. Remember, you could do whatever you want with your background. It doesn't have to look like mine. You could do zigzag lines, wavy lines. You could try it with more polka dots, but I think it might be too much with all of these gumballs in your machine, so keep it simple. Okay? You could simply make the bottom one color and all the background one co another color. That's fine too. Have fun with it. Be creative. And remember, you have lots of different coloring options. And if you happen to have any of these colorful pom-poms around, those are an option too. So I hope you have so much fun with this project and helping us celebrate Wayne Tebow's 100th birthday with some adorable gumball machines. Make sure you send me a picture of your artwork when you're done so I can grade it. And I can't wait to see your gumball machines. And I'll see you again next time for art class. Bye!